So it's just it's just easier that I way. I absolutely need to try that because <laughs> I've never done that. If you in your devices, you know how to use all of this technology. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's a good place to start. Hi, I am Robert K. Elder. I'm your host. You are listening to the Big Questions podcast where we talk about love, death, sex, religion, and all the big questions worth asking. Today we're talking with Christine Wolf. Uh, she's our new columnist on the North Shore and a uh, mother who leads this like sort of amazing life and a writer. Um, the Big Questions podcast is sponsored by Sure, uh, purveyors of professional microphones and headphones. Check them out at sure.com. That's S-H-U-R-E.com. The Big Questions podcast is also part of the Sun-Times Media Local Podcast Network. Christine, welcome. Thank you, Rob. Hey. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> well, th- well, thanks, thanks. And uh, again, I am a longtime Christine Wolf fan. Um, and, uh, you know, she brings, the, the, she brings this, like this large, uh, following on the North shore and has these very sort of thoughtful, uh, columns. And I asked her what she wanted to talk about, I wanted to talk about today. Um, and, uh, she surprised me because I'd never sort of thought about this before, but, um, it's a judgment versus opinion. Mm-hmm. So tell me what sparked that and, and, uh, where it's led you to. Uh, what sparked it is something that I did unintentionally. I had taken a photograph on my phone right after I'd gone through a Starbucks drive through mm-hmm. And I was noticing a woman who I assumed to be pregnant standing on the street mm-hmm. waiting for the bus. Mm-hmm. By the way, I saw the photo. She's pregnant. It's okay. It, I'm really sure that she was. But at the time I was sure, I don't know if she was. Yep. And, um, and she was smoking. And I don't know what compelled me to do it, but I grabbed my phone. I wasn't driving. I was waiting to enter traffic. I took a picture of her and I posted it on Facebook and I wrote under the caption, I said, pregnant and smoking, really? And it was what I thought to be my opinion that I just kind of was thinking out loud and put out on Facebook, which I do all the time. Mm -hmm. And I often get a lot of feedback on thinking out loud. And and it's one of the reasons I I think people are uh, uh, endeared to you is you have a wonderful social media uh, following. Go ahead. Well, thanks. And, you know, I I think I didn't think hard enough about the ramifications of what was going to happen. And so I posted it and I started to get feedback immediately. And people were furious. I mean, they were angry and I was getting private messages. I was getting... um, angry, you know, people telling me, how dare I judge this woman? And I kept thinking, I, I wasn't judging her. I was just really surprised. And, and I thought this was just my opinion. Yeah. But I don't know if the reaction was a combination of me uh, being a columnist and forgetting that I have a, a public persona um, or just I, I mean, I think I was really tone deaf to my own um, thinking. Well, and so, so bring me around to that because, you know, uh, part, part, yeah. part of me, again, my um, reaction to that was, okay, maybe an invasion of no privacy, but that woman was on the street, so she had no expectation of privacy. Right. And the other part of this is I just got done writing, writing about smoking, actually. I talked to um, Jane Brody, who's the New York Times health columnist. Wow. And she talked about smoking in particular, uh, the anti-smoking campaign was sort of the, like, the greatest um, cultural sort of rejection. Yeah. Um, you know, it was sort of a mini revolution. And part of that was um, not only just the health concerns, but people refusing to be... Uh, Refusing to Could submit be... their families to secondhand smoke right. and just changing the, the, the cultural norm. Yeah. And um, there is, I guess, as part of that, this sort of cultural shaming. Yep. Yep. Because yep. that was one of the first um, warnings that went on the, the packets, I think, in the 60s, which was... Pregnant made, and yeah, smoking. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I had parents who smoked yeah. and, and both quit. Um, actually, my mom and my stepfather both quit. My biological father ended up dying of esophageal cancer. Mm. So I've got this sort of trigger thing right. with smoking. Right. For better, for worse. And so, yeah. Okay. So you, you, you did this, this thing. And uh, again, take me through the reaction and w- how you thought about it differently. Well, when all of these, you know, all this negative feedback from, from a lot of people on Facebook started coming and I've developed a thick enough skin where a lot of it, I took in and I, I just kind of kept going on. But then my mom called me the next day oh. and she said, so, um, how are you feeling about this whole, um, kind of perception that people have of you of, of just judging that woman. And when I heard it from my mom, that's really what, 
what opened my eyes quicker than anything. And I said, I wasn't judging her. And he said, I, I think you were judging her. And I, I think yeah, I'm actually, I was. Uh, yeah, I think you're judging her, but I'm also saying like, why I, I'm asking you again, because you are coming from a more enlightened place because I am obviously not. Why, why, um, why did I shift? Why did you shift? What caused the shift? What made you think about it differently? You know, I really realized that I don't want to be this person that is judging others. Uh, because I don't want to be judged when I either make a mistake. You are not Jesus. Oh. It's okay. <laughs> it's that really Messiah fine. complex. He I is can't... taller. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it's an awful feeling because if I want to be taken seriously as um, as a human, as a columnist, I want to have I want to have balance, and I I, I do. It, yeah, but it's okay to have balance. But aren't there some things we should say as a society like this is not cool? Absolutely. Absolutely. And but, then what is wrong with being a clarion, um, somebody who says this is not cool? But if I, listen, if I had intended to judge, I'm going to talk you back in. I, I know, I know. I'm going to, and I'm going to try to skirt around it because I did not intend to judge her. If I had meant to judge her, that's one thing. But do you know what I mean? Well, tell me about the backlash. I want to know more about the backlash. Oh my God. I mean, one of my um, former co uh teachers that I used to teach with, she private messaged me and told me how angry she was and how she and her husband had sat down and talked about exactly what she was going to say to me because she was just, I mean, she was enraged. But but, but about what? Um, how dare I judge somebody whose circumstances I don't know. I didn't know that she, if she was pregnant or not. Um, who was I to... She's, she's pregnant. Okay. <laughs> I saw the photo. She's pregnant. Let's keep going. You know, it, it was one of those things where uh, there were some other people who commented. There's a friend of mine who um, mentioned that she, throughout her entire life, she's a larger woman, has always been struggling with the fact that people will um, mistake her for being pregnant or not know that she's pregnant when she is because she's larger. And this picture and my judgment really brought up horrible, horrible flashbacks for her. I mm. mean, it, it was so visceral for people and it surprised me and it really was never my intent to attack this woman. And I think that's how people perceived my And is it, post. is it because she was anonymous and on the street or would it have been, would it have been different if you would have said the same thing, but about somebody who had a public life, who was a celebrity? Wow. You know, I think the fact that she looked so downtrodden and she was an anonymous person, mm. I mean, she looked exhausted and she her hair was kind of greasy she was really you could tell she was just beaten down and i think it was that circumstance that there was nobody defending her and it yeah. was, it came off as me attacking her and as soon as i realized how that came off i i needed to turn around because i am not that person i i really didn't mean to be kicking somebody yeah and um and i could see how i had done that but and and my, my wife and i talked about this not in this example but um you know we had the circle of friends and one of her friends smoked all the way through her pregnancy yeah and i was like you know and it's it's also different um because my wife and i think about um uh friendship a little bit differently uh -huh. because i think maybe to a fault that it's my job like if i see a friend screwing up yeah it's my job it's it's part of the friendship yeah. to say hey not cool or hey have you thought about this and and her my wife's reaction was like not my place mm -hmm. um so you know we had very different yeah I'm, reactions to it i run i run into conflict situations and uncomfortable things you know kind of like you're talking oh. about oh so you're on my side right no i normally am mm -hmm. i'm i'm the betsy, first did one you to hear that just, <laughs> we're keeping track She's i'm gonna sorry to betsy this. Yeah, so. you know I, I mean and my husband and i are kind of like you guys but in reverse i mean i'm the one who will just charge forward and see and i'm not even saying yeah. charge forward i'm like i just think it's, but i am i think it's part of my my um your makeup. Well, no, it's part of my obligation because the other thing is like, I actually want that from my friends. Like if they see me screwing up, mm -hmm. I want them to say something because otherwise they're not friends. They are employees and or yes men. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I want friendship to like be yeah. value added. You right. know, I want, you know, I wanted to be perspective, uh, multi-perspective. Life's too short to, uh, to whisper about stuff that is 
already being talked about. Okay. You know, I, that's how I feel. So the, 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 the interesting part is, I think what you're saying, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, is if you had said the same thing about somebody who was public, it would have made a difference. I think but so. because this woman was anonymous, because like, I think that's where my reaction to your message is like, I think that's an, a very appropriate message. And mm -hmm. again, it's one of these cultural things like, hey, that's not okay. Mm -hmm. You know, we're also coming to that part and, you know, smoking and, you know, hitting a child is not the same thing. Mm -hmm. But it's one of those things, especially with the NFL scandal, where we can sort of say, no, we as a culture think this is not appropriate anymore. Yeah. But since it was somebody you didn't know and you didn't know her circumstances, I, I can see that. Well, but the message is still the same. I don't know. Like, does it does it let strangers off the hook for dangerous behavior? I don't know. I don't know, but I'll tell you the way the way that I sort of justified it, not justified it, but the way that I I really worked through it in my mind about where I stood on things. Um, I reached out to my friend, author Carrie Goldman. Mm -hmm. She wrote a book. Uh, it's called Bullying. And it's amazing. And I it just, would have been so good if it was like, uh, she would have been called a smoking while pregnant. <laughs> that would have been awesome. Awesome. She would have been my go-to gal. Okay. But I said to her, look what I did. T take a look at this and, and tell me, am I bullying this woman? Because I never meant to. And she said, interestingly, I don't think you're going to agree with her, yeah. but no, she said, automatically, no, go it ahead. wasn't right. She said it, it really was a form of cyberbullying, what I was doing. And I think there would be probably... Where, but where do we draw the line? Well, that's the interesting thing. And social media, so another friend of mine said, you know, you should write a column on this and you should call it, why does Facebook turn us into bullies? Mm. And That's very thoughtful. It is thoughtful. Yeah. And yet, it's not Facebook that turns us into it. It's ourselves. Yeah. You know, it's just a vehicle that allows us to stay behind and, and take these. I mean, it's the phones, too. We can yeah. just take pictures of anybody. It, think about the faces of Walmart. You know, yeah. people are... people of Walmart, yeah. How is that any different than what I've done? And I've laughed at, at a lot of those pictures because they're all in these big galleries and, you know, they're they're insanely funny when they're all, you know, compiled as a theme. And yet, it's really sad. People yeah. are, are doing this. Yeah. Um, so I and, did it and, and I felt terrible. Well, and you, again, you're not the first person to express an opinion and then backpedal before we started uh, the show here. Um, Henry Rollins, who is somebody who, um, has had a you know very interesting life, you know, started in a punk band and now he's sort of become this like, you know, traveling social crusader and, and, uh, you know, uh, corporate spokesman and yeah. author and you know, weird, interesting life. Um, he wrote, I think it's for LA Weekly about how he basically lost respect for Robin Williams after he committed suicide. Right. And, you know, he got an avalanche of hate mail. And his response column was the most thoughtful thing out of the whole thing, which is like, listen, I, I realize I may have lost you. And I realize that that column expressed um, just an ignorance about what depression is. Mm -hmm. And I thought I had depression and, and maybe this is uh, something that, is, you know, it was a way of not just apologizing, but recognizing his own ignorance. And I had never seen that done in public before. Right. And again, he's sort of a, um, you know, he's not a huge figure, but he is somebody with a platform. And so um, how did you choose to um, uh, remedy what you had done? Well, <clears throat> besides come on this podcast, <laughs> <laughs> which again, thank yeah. you for that yeah, opportunity. A... You know, uh, when I realized that it, it was wrong in my heart, I, it felt wrong and I had to listen to my gut. I decided I was going to take the picture down, but first I wanted to copy all of the comments because I really wanted to remember what people were saying mm. and I wanted to write about it ultimately. So I took the picture down and I, you know, archived all those comments for another time. But I put a public apology up. And for anybody who had missed the picture, mm -hmm. um, I explained what I had done. And I explained why it was wrong. And I, I said, I really never should have done that. And, uh, you know, I didn't say, I'm sorry if I offended other people, because I don't think that's a true apology. No, no, that's like, I'm sorry you felt the way you did. Exactly. Yeah. I just said, I, I really shouldn't have done it. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm Facebook friends with my kids' friends. I'm Facebook friends with you know, potential people who may hire me someday. Mm -hmm. And I realized this is a, a character thing. Yeah. And, um, you know, it wasn't hard. It wasn't something that I was really upset about, you know, crying and, and writing. I, it was not even a question to me. It was, you need to correct the wrong. And, and I realized that a lot of people would, um, be ready to unleash more fury on me. And I said, I deserve it. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And that just like 
gave an outpouring of people. I figured people were going to be just pissed. Yeah. And um, instead, they started saying, good for you, good for owning up to it. And that surprised me, too. Yeah, well, and I, I think because it's a rare thing. That's why I wanted to talk about this in particular, not to rehash this, but just the afterglow is the wrong word, but the aftermath, the, mm-hmm. the fallout, when it's not really fallout, like, hey, my, a mistake, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I shouldn't have done it, I, I've owned up to it. Mm-hmm. I think people respond to that positively because it's sincere. It's rare, and they wish they could do it themselves. I'm, you know, I think I was just m- most amazed that people found that rare because yeah. that's just the way that I guess that I was raised. You know, you screw up, and you you just it's not even a question. You have to make amends for what you did wrong. Well, and th- there's a guy, and I'm not going to name him because he did it privately, but there was somebody who wrote something about me years ago, um, uh, sort of publicly. And it was just uh, inappropriate and ill-informed. And it was coming from a, mm. a, a different um, uh, point of view. And he reached out and he's like, hey, you know, I, I am sort of revisiting this. I wanted to, you know, apologize. And, you know, your name floated to the top. And uh, he's like, I'm sorry. And and I just wrote him back. And I was like, thank you so much. Wow. Um, uh, and he, he had a, a book come out recently. And I had noticed the book. So I complimented him on the book because it's a great book. Yeah. Um, but I also just said... Um, you know, uh, you have my respect and it made me feel better about the human race. I right. was like, Oh, you know, I was like, Oh, that's yeah. so nice that that can, that, that can happen. Well, I don't think anybody wants to watch someone get attacked. And I, I think that's where people jumped out. And I just like, you didn't, you know, you didn't ask to be attacked. It, it sounds like, no, no. And, uh, so for somebody to switch it back around, it's, it's, it's heartwarming to yeah. know that there's, um, there's heart inside of people. Well, and it's also interesting that you chose to do that, not only because you had friends and, and people who um, cared enough to reach out, but this woman has no idea. Like, that's the other thing is like, you did it sort of in a vacuum. It really would not have mattered, Mm -hmm. but because it had this impact on you, it helped you uh, learn something. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to ask is, so what did, what did you learn? Oh my God. You know, just, uh, just to stop and think more. I know it sounds so trite, but, and I've, I've made mistakes before on social Mm -hmm. media. Um, I've sent emails that, you know, weren't intended for the audience that received them. And I totally want to have another podcast. Oh my God. That is my (laughs) worst story that I cried over, but that it was just, and and okay, give us the broad strokes because we can't bring something up and then then not. it's, It's one of the worst things. The, the grade school that our kids go to, there's a, public list serve, you know, that mm-hmm. all the parents can share ideas. This is going to go downhill fast. Go ahead. It was awful. Um, and there was a discussion happening and I thought I hit reply instead of reply all. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter I, it, whether I did or didn't. It's somehow my reply about somebody's child mm. and how I wasn't a fan of this child mm-hmm. went to the entire school. Mm. And uh, it was one of those things where as soon as I hit send... And I got a copy back to myself. Oh. I realized what I had done. And I, I sat at my computer and just started trying to delete, 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 delete. It was the worst feeling ever. And then I started getting emails from people saying, uh, you want me to bring over a bottle of wine? Are you okay? Are you going to come out of the house? Um, you know, hey, we all screw up. But Yeah, yeah. And, and, and also because people know you to be of good judgment, uh, where's that child in uh, jail now? Uh, he's a good kid. <laughs> okay, he okay. is a good kid. Yes, okay, so, and every so time I see him, I think, wrong. "What a what a meanie I am!" You know, I, and that was that's the problem is the what I learned from all this is it, we're so fast and we're just hitting send so quickly. But is it judgment versus opinion, or is it private? Is or is it private opinion versus public opinion? That's the big problem with social media is. Um, you have to ask yourself that before you hit send, you have to say, is this my own opinion? Is my opinion sort of laced or informed by my own judgment? Is my judgment coming through louder than my opinion? Um, and what's the circumstance? But you're also a columnist. You're at a point now where your opinion is your column. Like that's, that's the thing. So like, what is the thin bright line? Indeed. I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna back down for everything that I say. I mean, when I hated this one store name that was in Evanston that I wrote about and everybody was attacking me for attacking this store owner, Mm -hmm. I thought, you know what? I'm allowed to not love 
the name of this store. What, because it was inappropriate or what was it? It was, it was a, a, a stupid name. It's called Flea. And they made these bags called Flea Bags. And I made fun of the fact that these flea bags sounded ridiculous. I mean, really? Yeah, yeah really? But, it, but, but it was not offensive. You were not defending the little guy there. <laughs> or maybe you were. Fleas are small. There's the, the, the little guys. And it was guys. humorous. And it was like, it was, and I even complimented the stuff. But when you're, when you're dealing, I, I guess, as a, as, as somebody who's espousing a public opinion, if you're going to want people to listen and to, to provide feedback um, and continue to keep coming back, you've got to listen to them. Yeah. I mean, but you also have to stand by your principles and, you know, even if people disagree exactly. with you. Yeah. And, and again, that's why I think that your decision about this woman smoking is, uh, is interesting. Like the hair that seems to be split here is because it was a stranger. If it was a public figure, it would have been a different thing. I think you're right. And I, I really had not thought about how it would have been different with anybody else. Or, you know, w would it have been different or just as bad or worse if it had been, a you know, a teenage kid um, standing there smoking? I mean, probably even worse. Because yeah. that's just even more of a vile attack on somebody. But, it, but, but I think vile attack is sort of someplace that's coming from a place of hatred or prejudice Whereas your um, perhaps uh, ill-considered opinion about this or your yeah. action about this came from a place of concern, really, well, like, yeah. and, and, and also of sort of like a, a tiny bit of social outrage. Yeah. Well, my focus was really on the fetus mm -hmm. and not on that woman mm -hmm. because I looked right past her. You could see the fetus smoking. Well, I menthol. really uh, clearly, you know, <laughs> because. If she really was pregnant, that baby was smoking. She had her back arched. Yes. <laughs> she was pregnant. Let's just let's get she, this out of the way. Okay. So, it's, I really, it, to your point, I will always stand by my principles. I have to. But what? my principle is not to be um, hurtful to somebody. And I could see with others pointing it out that my statement really was attacking this woman. But you... Can't avoid that. Again, you're a columnist. You're mm -hmm. a very uh, respected columnist on the North Shore. Thank you. Um, not by uh, everyone. <laughs> I know, but the thing is, you know, not everybody agreed with Royko. You know, not everybody agreed even, um, you know, with the film criticism, with, with Ebert. Mm -hmm. But it was the beginning of a discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, for Royko, probably not. He probably, <laughs> probably would have some some uh, uh, barbed words for you, and that was the last <laughs> it would, it would, you'd hear from him. Um, but so let's talk a little bit about um, some of the things you want to write about. Yeah. And then some of the things that you might be challenged to write about, given this lesson. Sure. Um, I'd love to write about things that people are – whispering about and sort of afraid to bring into public discussion. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's the whole Hemingway thing, by the way, when his, when his uh, first book came out, um, it was a book of uh, short stories. His parents were, um, or was it, or is it the sun also rises um, where um, he gets the, his parents, the book and the father literally says he doesn't want the filth in the house oh, because no. it, somebody catches a venereal disease and, oh. in, in one of the stories, I think in the back of a cab in Lincoln park. But, um, his response to his mother was really great. It basically said, listen, I am sure. Yes, I'm sure it's obscene or dirty or something. He said, but it is no more. I'm, I'm, I'm ruining the quote, but the gist is it's no more, um, obscene or dirtier or whatever than what goes on in whispers in the most respectable houses. Oh, that's great. So, so we'll, we'll find the quote, but so what are the whispers you want to bring out? Oh my God. Everything from, um, you know, depression obviously is such a hot button, but it, it was something that I wanted to talk about mm -hmm. long ago. Um, families struggle with it everywhere, mm -hmm. my own family included. And people just tend not to want to bring up the stigma about it. Mm -hmm. So, and it's it's again yeah. specifically depression versus just sadness. Like I think people just don't understand the yeah. chasm between those two. I was really amazed at how many people, and not you know just the whole Rollins um, example, but yeah. just how many people truly don't grasp what it feels like mm -hmm. um, 
so you know, and I, I can speak from personal experience about what exactly it feels like. Sure, like the black no hope of it all, the the no alternative sometimes, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And what it, what it's like to take medication, what it's like to go to therapy, what it's like to not be understood, and mm-hmm. what it's like to have it just sort of kind of creep in when you don't even have anything to be sad about. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot to be discussed about that. Um, uh, lots and, 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 and in particular, yeah. um, uh, uh, what kind of medication and what do you recommend? Because <laughs> uh, I'm just saying, I know a guy. No, no, no. Uh, uh, Depends on yeah. a lot of things. We can talk. <laughs> no, no. I'll tell you. <laughs> but uh, again, it's the sort of um, modern day thing. I, life is tough. Yeah. And it's tough for everybody. But again, it's one of those things where you have to decide where is the line and is it a chronic condition? Is it a passing condition? Or in some cases, a hereditary thing that... Yeah. You know, do people self-medicate? And I, I kind of actually hate self-medicate as a concept. Right. But I can see the application in my life. Oh, for you know? sure. Not in my life, in my... Yeah. You're talking to somebody who does not drink. Um, but uh, I can see the application from the people around me, you know? Can't you? It's... So, it's Well, that's definitely stuff I want to write about. Yeah. I, I would love to just write about the... <laughs> this will always be such a hot button, and I think it's been for way too long. Um, yoga pants. <laughs> already did that. <laughs> okay. Covered that. That was that was definitely something that was. Uh, wow. Okay, don't let yeah. me derail you. Keep no. me, what, 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 what else? What else? I, do you but I really want to. I really want to talk about race. Mm-hmm. I really want to talk about it in um, productive ways. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so many of you know. I don't know if you've heard about courageous conversations, but there's a movement in Evanston and maybe beyond about people sitting down and with a facilitator talking about all of these, you know, just feelings that they've had that they just were afraid to say because they were afraid of offending each other and being brave enough to come out and talk about some of these misunderstandings that Mm -hmm. all of us have. That's the kind of stuff I really want to be able to, to engage the community over and, um, and get these conversations going rather than just, I mean, they're festering all over Facebook. Yeah. They're festering in, you know, personal discussions and, and phone calls, but there it's just growing. And, and I, and I truly worry, especially about my own town, what's happening. It's, I, I feel like it's getting so much worse than even when I moved in 15 years ago. Hmm. Yeah. Um, um, other, other than that, what, what are the old, what are the other sort of, uh, burning topics? And, and I'm looking particularly because, uh, you know, you have, uh, how many children? I've got three. Three children. Yeah. Two dogs. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't understand the dogs part. I just don't. Uh, <laughs> Neither do I, three, really. three kids is enough. Two dogs. <laughs> uh, at a certain point, you're just asking for it. Um, but, um, you know, what are the things that you see them facing that you might write about? Oh, so many things. And that's the hard part. You know, what can I write about mm-hmm. that my kids are going through without violating their personal space answer nothing well that's you know <laughs> th- what i just wrote about for my uh first column f- mm-hmm. for pioneer press is about an experience that my daughter went through mm-hmm. with social anxiety and really being um in a horrible spot in her middle school where she was holding it all together and nobody was noticing what was going on mm-hmm. and um you know i had to advocate for her and she ultimately thankfully spoke up for herself and we were together able to get, you know, um, intervention and a lot of positivity. But I have to say, I had to ask her for her permission to Mm -hmm. write about it. And she was so brave Mm -hmm. and willing to talk about this because I think she sees the value in opening up dialogue about difficult subjects. Mm -hmm. There's such a, it, it, it's, it's such a rewarding feeling when you know that there might be somebody else who's going through what you're going through. And if only somebody would have spoken up, you know, things she wishes somebody would have spoken up about her situation or her kind of situation. I was going to say, not only you're raising strong moral children, you're also ra- raising the next generation of calmness. Like that's a, that's <laughs> she's, a, a, <laughs> she's a fabulous writer. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Yeah. She, she blows anybody away that I've ever read. She is prolific. I'm saving all of her stuff. You have to show me how to archive. <laughs> okay. Things. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's easy. Okay. It's a manila folder. <laughs> so, so, um, my, my last sort of question that, um, sort of uh, is along these lines and that is just when you see your kids and you see the culture now and the culture we grew up in 
what are you grateful for that has changed? And what are you not so grateful for? <laughs> Let me start with what I'm not grateful for. Okay. I am not grateful for how um, terrifying the world is for them. I, I can't even imagine how they, you know, I don't want to think about what goes on in the deepest parts of their psyche because they don't have the confidence of everything being okay mm. the way that I did growing up. You know, everybody always told me I could do whatever I want. We'd always be okay. You know, we are the strongest nation in the world. All of this stuff that n doesn't really resonate with, with their generation anymore. See that, cause that's some, that's a, a criticism of millennials is like that they're shut off from any other criticism that they, you know, <laughs> they believe that we are always number one and, wow. you know, they're given participation trophies and, you know, this has been, this is old beating, yeah. a, beating a dead horse at this point. Yeah. But it's interesting that you're saying that that they don't believe that and that they have uh, what uh, some underlying anxiety about that. Yeah, I I, I know they do. I yeah. really do. I know. I've listened to the conversations, and not just my kids, their friends. Mm. I you know I'm like I said I I'm Facebook friends with a lot of them. Um, not for this reason, right. but I, you know I just really want to know what they're talking you have a about. Network. Yeah. <laughs> and it's. Uh, you know, it comes through in what they say and what they do and just little, little comments that they make. So, so they don't have the same comfort that you did growing up. That's a perfect way to say it. Yeah. I have no idea what that. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 I you, never had any of that comfort. So I'm envious of your upbringing. Um, <sighs> what, tell, tell me, tell me what else, what else did you have? What am I, uh, what am I happy about that my kids have? Or, or not happy. Like this just, again, what has changed that you're happy about? And then what are you not so happy about? I, you know, for as, as, frustrating as some of the social media stuff is to navigate i'm so happy that they have this connection the the all of this this ability to stay i mean i i'm so close with my kids and they are so much closer with their grandparents and with their friends because of social media and because of the internet it's it's such a different world. we're all so much more we're closer you know it's again that sounds trite but what I would have given to be able to sit down in a living room with my mom and dad. Mm -hmm. who, and to tweet your dad. Well, <laughs> there's so much more humor, I think. Dad, pass the popcorn. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do. I text my kids to come downstairs, right? Mm. To, to come down for dinner. I, I'm not there yet. It, you will be. Six and and as horrified as you might sound. In like 10 years, it's yeah. going to be like some telepathy it'll thing. Be it'll be what, it'll on be their something. foreheads. Yeah, I, yeah. It, it's, not, it's, it's not far away, though. You'll be surprised. How, how old are your kids again? Six. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My my wife was saying something the other day about um, being horrified about some fashion thing in the future. I'm like, you don't even know. In ten years, it's going to be so bad, it's not even going to be funny. Oh like, you know, God. we're we're going to have to convince them to wear underwear because that's not going to be the fashion or something. <laughs> you know, it's going because that's what it does. It, it's there. It, it you know the the rebellion in order for it to be genuine has to push some sort of buttons. Yeah. You know, and I yeah. think, I think, you know, that, that, that's another like Henry Rollins joke is, is, uh, uh Marilyn Manson as a role model. Yeah. I was like, Hey mom and dad, this is what a good parent you are. <laughs> you know, see this like drug addict, bisexual, lanky, you know, pale guy. That's who I'm into, <laughs> but it has to have that. It has to have some sort of yeah. a button pushing thing or it's not true rebellion. You, you know, this is Pat Boone otherwise. Oh you know? God. Yeah. So thank you so much for coming for on. Having me. Uh, and I am uh, um, uh, trying to get Christine to start her own podcast here on the uh, Sometimes Media Local uh, Podcast you, Network. You're inspiring me. Oh, this was I don't fun. know if I'm going to be fun. able to. I'm, I'll have to try to stay on task. You? No, you'll be fine. Okay. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and again, uh, the Big Questions Podcast is part of this, the Sometimes Media Local Podcast Network. Our music is by Ernan Sanchez. Christine, thanks again. Thank you, Rob. Thank you.